Hello everyone. In this video, this is a very special video here, I have what we can consider a vintage item. Now this is a Practical Peripherals 2400 SA MNP Network Protocol modem. Now, I found this thing on eBay for a remarkably good deal. I went ahead and bid on the item, and I bid 99 cents just to see, you know, maybe I would get something. And it happened to be the only person wanting to buy it, so I ended up winning it for only 99 cents. So this won't really be a take-apart video very much. It's more like just going to show you what's a technology from the late 80s. As you can see on the back here, we have a copyright date of, it's not showing up, but right there it says 1989. So this piece is definitely a vintage item. And as you can see, this is what the modem looks like on the box. Definitely aged. And what's kind of cool about this thing is that every single company on this box is out of business. So Practical Peripherals no longer exists. Neither does CompuServe right up there. Just an old, very, very old modem technology here. We also got ourselves Rockwell, which is also listed on there. They've been around for a long time, but just recently just defuncted. Uh, if that's even a word. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the back here. So, it says, by utilizing advanced surface mount technology. Now, immediately I hear ancient because surface mount technology is no big deal now. But back then, I guess, it was some brand new innovative thing that nobody's ever done before. Uh, and, yeah, there's also haze on here. So, that's another one. Right there. 100% haze compatible. And haze no longer exists. It's one of the big three uh, companies that created modems back then. And, yeah, it says 4800 BPS. So, I guess bits per second. So, that's extremely slow in today's standards. Um, they're going up to like gigabits. So, there's bits and then megabits and then kilobits and then now gigabits so actually no megabits and now gigabits so yeah definitely very very slow and we got an RS-232C serial port and serial port is serial technology or serial interface is now much much phased out when now it's all about it Ethernet and all these other more faster ways of connecting. And yeah, so that's pretty cool. And here we can see, again it says Hayes 2400 Smart Modem on the fifth bullet point. But if we look here, we can also see that you can basically see all this information here. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just such a ancient piece of technology. I just had to pick it up. So, yeah. This was, of course, a big deal back then. This probably costed a lot of money. So, yeah. But nowadays, it's pretty much worthless. And modems are very easy to get now. So, I'm going to go ahead and unbox this. And we can go ahead and see what's inside. I'm definitely going to keep everything in here because it's just a, such a historical item. So let's go ahead and, as you can see, we still got the shrink wrap on it. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I just really like the 80s aesthetic to this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and I'll show you what's inside. Go ahead and try to find the opening. Looks like there's a crease there. So it looks like that ends up. Looks like that's a solid side. 
but we can see the line go all the way to there. So it looks like that's going to be the opening. Got to be very careful because I want to preserve this piece of technology as it's likely I'm not going to find something like this again. Gonna go along the side here. It's amazing that this thing is so um, so old and yet it has never been opened. So it kind of feels like a special thing. I've always had kind of a heart for old tech, probably because I've been around with so much computers and, you know, so long and, I don't know, it's just something I've always liked. along here so it looks like I opened it on the wrong way so look it's just on both sides so I'm gonna go ahead and just set up just like this So yeah, of course we want to keep the little Starburst sticker, so I'll probably just cut it out and put it in this box. So now we have it open. Let's go ahead and see what's in here. So there we go. There's the serial number. And it says in very small letters. 0400409991 so it's not no special kind of low value serial number or anything so yeah anyway practical peripherals inc westlake village california 91362 look at that styrofoam Wow, look at that. We got ourselves an operating manual. It's pretty cool. Have a look at that later. That we guess we'd have a little check right now. So, looks like it's just showing you, yeah, practical rifles right there. And it's a PM2400SA MNP modem. And MNP is a special kind of network protocol, multi-cell network protocol, I think. Um, and introduction says, congratulations on your purchase of the Practical Peripherals PM2400 SA M&P External 2400 bits per second modem. So, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. It basically just tells you how to use it. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It looks like there's a little card, a reference card in there, so you know all of the shortcuts and what everything means. So yeah, this is revision 1.012. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Nothing on the back. Go ahead and see here. It's like a never used limited product warranty card. 
so you can basically show what you know and everything uh, who you are and just get the product registered so if anything happens you can turn it in fine look at that beautiful practical referrals color logo so now let's go ahead and see what's underneath there what's interesting is even the styrofoam here has a practical peripherals logo on it and just got lots of goodies in here lots and lots of goodies so we got ourselves the modem itself in its protective package beautiful put that to the side there here go to ourselves our offer bundle with a little map in the background and a little zone USA pictogram there so it's pretty cool this is PC out dial services nationwide data communications for less up to two hundred dollars so this is kinda like a lots and lots of information So, PC business call practical peripheral special offer PC business call and another one there look at that old computer there it's pretty cool by US Sprint with that old classic logo I love this kind of stuff put this back in here it belongs and there's just a nice computer there pull here for your access listing poster so there's actually a free poster in here that's pretty cool it's like a little screen but when you pull it out it's actually just a window and I have no idea if they included a free map this stuff is really cool I really love this kind of stuff and it's just basically a advertisement poster for US Sprint very nice so this basically shows you all of their services and where they are located where you can I guess get your stuff get your uh, product that you want very cool love it Let's see if there's anything on the back aha there is so this is basically all your telephone numbers so if you want to go to a pay phone or something you got you got everything you need here so yeah these are all their service numbers and I guess that's the front part is their service map so see where you can get service it's pretty cool just back in here and there we go so yeah this is a little pack that shows you everything they have US Sprint very nice we got our standard telephone jack telephone wires random piece of styrofoam for some reason it's like it's a little broken in here I don't know what this was for though but it says our wall wart it is a class 2 transformer just your ordinary transformer with a input voltage of 120 volts with 60 hertz at 12 watts with an output with AC 9 volts 800 milliamps so yeah pretty cool here is another little product guide volume 4 I wonder what the other volumes are or if they made even others so yeah this is basically all their products that they have they even have little modem cards standalone modems it's all folded so it's kind of hard to show it a uh, little communications package and some more cards and such and with the PS2 so maybe it's made for IBM 2400 bits per second full card modem that supports micro channel architecture for IBM incompatibles so you know IBM PC clones and stuff these will work for it's a little mini modem there pretty cool very small modem very big performance I really like how they advertised everything back then a very practical value a nice exclamation point at the end it's very nice 
and you can see all their features for each and every one of those products. Uh, there's even more. So there's some more choices. Look at those bulky chips on there and very, very cool. Looks like you can even have it a network setup. So you got a main unit and then all these little smaller ones. That looks like it's with it. It's a new product. You can see that right there. Peapod. The more Peapods you add to the Pnet, the easier it becomes to share peripherals and control workflow. So if you have a little business, you can set these all up and they all work together. Graphic card. I've seen a couple of these online before on eBay. Parallel graphics interface card for Apple II, 2 Plus, and 2E computers. So this was probably really popular. Serial, I've never heard about that. But you can see their headquarters on the back. Look for quality, performance, and value. You'll find practical peripherals. Very nice. And it's proudly made in the United States of America. It's a nice touch. Next, that's before everything was made in China and Taiwan and stuff. Uh, Five-year guarantee, too. So, yeah, pretty cool. Let's check the other stuff. A letter. Not really a letter, but... Pretty cool. Um, Practical Peripherals Inc. has joined the online community of manufacturers represented on the CompuServe Information Service. So, this I guess is little, I guess, comp call them up and get connected to CompuServe and, you know, just it's like early internet kind of. At any prompt on CompuServe, type go PPI form. So, it's pretty cool. So it's basically just their advertisement to say to go on CompuServe and enjoy. And yeah, it's one more item here. CompuServe introductory membership. So I guess it goes along with this here. So yeah, a free membership that lets you go online immediately. It includes a $15 usage credit. So you, know, you have to pay money, of course, because it's pretty cool back then. Um, and basically just a introductory booklet a booklet sorry about that and you can see all these people I'm guessing that worked there or they were interviewed and they spoke their mind it's nice to see all the pictures of the smiling people and everything it's just something you don't see nowadays in a lot of these products you don't you don't have that personal touch and yeah Pretty cool. Tells you how to log in for the first time and how to become a member. And there's even a little free starter account right there. That's pretty cool. There's even a $15 credit there. So, wow, it's pretty cool. And using the information service, then that, and Free customer service areas, so I guess those are all the different companies. I kind of don't know because I wasn't bored around this time, though I wish I was, even though I knew there's a lot of issues with uh, politics and such that I wouldn't be necessarily the happiest, but it'd still be neat to be able to experience something like this, but I wasn't, I wasn't born during that time. Uh, you can see the back of a little computer there. Yeah, that's a little printer with a serial port. Uh, could be also parallel, I don't know. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Getting the most out of CompuServe, connecting with CompuServe people. And, nice little glow picture there. I'm guessing you can shop? I don't know. Probably do a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, shop in comfort, there we go. Um, and get support, so if you have problems with your IBM PC, or whatever computer, you can just go on there and ask them. Uh, join a group. So you can kind of in bulletin boards and stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like how it says, no matter what kind of computer or software you use, there is a CompuServe personal computer form for you. IBM, Macintosh, Apple II, and 3 Series, Tandy, Atari, Commodore, and Amiga are some of the computer systems supported on CompuServe. So that's pretty cool. 
Tandy and Atari and Commodore are all old companies. I don't, they don't make any more computers for. And IBM too, I don't think. I mean, they make servers and stuff, but don't really make many personal computers anymore. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, you can also have some fun and play some games. So there's a nice little picture of some chess going on. I wonder who's winning. Um, and over here, we get to see a picture of a newspaper with some money. And you can see what's news and invest, how to invest in stuff. So CompuServe had a lot of things you could do. Uh, let's see. And you can find facts fast and keep in touch. So you have like, you can keep up with, um, talk to people and your colleagues and coworkers. And you can find facts fast. So you don't need to pull out a bulky, huge encyclopedia connection. You can just go onto their online service and use that. They even got an executive service. So that's pretty cool. So I guess you can get go premium go gold and get a whole bunch of extra benefits like executive news, business decision services to get better yourself and yeah there's a whole bunch of other links here so that's pretty cool I guess you would type in prompts to access different parts of CompuServe so I can guess there's lots and lots of different companies and Lots of people use CompuServe, it seems. Um, I'm pretty sure some of you guys probably have known somebody or have used CompuServe yourself. Um, and you just got your agreement terms and stuff. See on the back here, you can get some reference information for CompuServe. I guarantee if anyone has this kind of stuff, it's pretty valuable. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Go ahead and just put everything back together. Now let's take a look at the motive itself. So we've got ourselves two little serial telephone ports and a nice big parallel uh, not parallel but um, serial port on the back there uh, looks like a DC jack and some switch of some kind I don't know what that's for but on the back here practical peripherals PM 2400 SA MNP so that's pretty cool and actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and just open it up and just take a quick look and see what's inside. So I'll be right back. But of course, I'll use great caution when I do this so I don't damage it. Looks like it just takes some Phillips head screws, so I'll be back. Alright, just using a little screwdriver, a PH number 2, we're able to remove the fairly long screws, all four of them, and... Here we go. I'm liking what I see right there. Let's go ahead and see what we look have on the other side. Huh, that's a little disappointment. But we got lots of stuff here. Looks like we got ourselves a pretty bulky capacitor. It's in a axial lead, so it's not it's just a one on each side. This has some pretty big bulky chips here. I'm trying not to touch anything because I don't want to ruin it if I want to happen to use it sometime just to load it up and I'm holding everything and stay away from touching any of the traces or anything um here it is looks like lots of various things we got ourselves a some EEPROMs there probably to hold ROM or important information that's only specific to this particular machine. Got ourselves, looks like a speaker. Um, we also got ourselves, you know, your typical um, setup right up here. Not quite sure how to explain, but um, if you've ever taken apart any modems, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
got your transformer there, some, you know, various small components that's very common. Uh, and got ourselves some LEDs, five red and two white. Lots of bulky chips everywhere because, you know, this is brand new stuff. Of course, we got ourselves the Practical Peripherals logo. It's the benefit of having big hands. You can grab everything easily. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I was a little let down by seeing this. I thought it was going to be a nice, like, ceramic CPU or something. Just to uh, have, but no, it's not. And I don't want to remove any of these stickers because it's UV most likely, so it's going to damage it if I try to open it. If I try to remove those, it's going to wipe everything, which will make it not work anymore. So I'll avoid touching that. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So other than that, I really don't have that much to say about this machine. It's definitely a very fun teardown um, and look into a little bit of history. So I hope you enjoyed. And by the way, I really appreciate the 200 subscribers. I always work hard and do my best to help entertain you guys and I really appreciate your feedback on some of the videos and your continued support and viewing. And to any of those new people that are here, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoy any future content I make. So yeah, thanks for watching. And I'm just going to put this back together and I hope you have a great day.